Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. What can be done to help bring together youth from basically every continent of the world together to focus on many of the problems we're dealing with, such as climate change, uh, gender equality, and many others. My guest today is going to talk about a very interesting program that she started. My guest today is Ms. Cynthia English, and Cynthia English, an entrepreneur and visionary, is the CEO and founder of Global Scribes Youth Uniting Nations. Cynthia, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you. Thank I, you. I appreciate you being with me. Let's talk, jump right into it. What is Global Scribes Youth Uniting Nations. What is this concept? When was it formed? Why was it formed? If you think about even just this week and what's happening at the United Nations and all of um, over the past few years, really, and this trajectory of global chaos that we are on, what if, what if youth from the time they were young, eight years old, six years old, and upward through their growth, actually had the opportunity to break the fear of different, to break generational stereotypes, to understand that we are all just people with more similarities than differences, mm -hmm. and that we removed politics, religion, and any kind of segregation from the table to give them an opportunity to have fun together, to create things together, and to actually form global friendships and unity that change their perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, our viewers can go to your website, globalscribes.org, but the, the official title is Global Scribes Youth Uniting Nations. But do you have an age limit? We say youth, that can <laughs> cover a vast array or a large number of people, but, or young people, but do you have an age limit? Do you have certain criteria to be a member of this group? And I'm assuming you do most of this electronically, is that correct? Yes, so we are a virtual company. Virtual. We're, we're a tech organization, mm -hmm. as it were, and, and actually it's really interesting because if you ever fill out a form, everyone wants to know where your headquarters is, but we are truly a virtual company without mm -hmm. any headquarters. And this gives youth, ages eight to 25, um, access to uh, use the one tool they use every single day technology, which a lot of media has been anti-technology and the smartphone and the phone and the computer and et cetera, but we're actually using it for positive youth impact. I should make it really clear that youth cannot just join Global Scribes. Um, we are eight years old to 25 years old, but they must come to us either through schools or other organizations of any kind, um, or if they just find us on the web, um, they're, they're welcome to connect with us, but they have to have a video conference call. We take cybersecurity extremely seriously, and we have had very slow growth um, because of that. Better to err on the side of not fast enough than too fast. True, better to be cautious <laughs> and to be sorry later. Yes. That it didn't happen. So now do you do, uh, well, Teleconferencing? Do you do, uh, do you do online exchanges? Do you meet virtually once a week, once a month? How, how does that operate? So we were founded uh, to answer your earlier question, July 9th of 2014. So we're coming on four years, and we launched the website um, November 26th, so Thanksgiving Eve in the United States um, of 2014. And those youth, the way that we actually uh, found it, we, we started was with a video conference call with youth from around the world. And that was just organic, how they'd found us or through people we knew that knew, had children or whatever. Um, today, we have, we're really a communications organization. And today, um, they meet every single day through WhatsApp. Um, we have different teams. We have 17 teams. We have four steps, and weekly there is what we call core call. So at 8.30 a.m. every Sunday, New York City time, the kids can log on anywhere from anywhere in the world, and we use Zoom.us for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now we're, we're still in a fragmented format uh, of Scribers World. Our goal is to collect the funding to be able to then build Scribers World, which is our own cybersecure world where each of our youth have their own page, they can archive, et cetera. So we have four steps, just to take this a little okay, bit please. further, sure. if that's okay. Mm -hmm, sure. Um, our first step, and, and the goal of each one of these four steps is 
to bring us closer to them, realizing we are all just people. So that as they become our community, corporate, global, country leaders, instead of thinking me, 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 and going into the United Nations or going into a negotiating room thinking I've got to win this, they actually go, they arrive, they have their agenda, and they look above their country, Argentina, Chile, Russia, China, the US, et cetera, and they're like, oh, Pedro, how are you? We were scribes together, we worked on this, yada, yada, do you remember? And they start to think we, not me, because then the dynamics of the negotiations take on a completely different um, air. I mean, they're not gonna, they're, they, and they have to, because when they represent 40% of 7.6 billion people are under the age of 25 when they are going to, excuse me, have to not only share our planet's natural resources, which as we know are becoming more and more limited, but they're gonna have to compete for jobs unlike any time before. So each one of these four steps has a <coughs> purpose in driving towards that as our end goal. Step one, we ask them to write. So there is a spark word, and this it just changed uh, uh, last night, overnight. Um, it is a smile this month, but you never know what the word is gonna be. It can be chocolate, lemon, et cetera. And we ask each youth to actually scribe a poem or music lyrics or a script or a creative story or a narrative sparked by that word. In English, they best they can because that's the universal language but also in their own language when they mm -hmm. can. And then each of the steps going forward, and I don't want to speak too much <laughs> about <laughs> so, it, but yeah, so. using again what they're good at. Exactly, the, certainly the way to focus on the, the term scribes, when I heard about your organization, I was thinking about that global, I can see that you're covering the world to a large degree. How did you choose the title scribe, or that word scribe to use how do you define scribe, is what I should say. <laughs> it's a great question. And um, really, we use it extremely liberally because the goal of that is, even if you're thinking about a um, theater or music or writing, of course, or anything you do in life, even your strategy, you start with a compilation of words running around in your head that then somehow comes out into something that's live, mm -hmm. hopefully. And it's a collection of words. And so we're using scribes because it has to, those thoughts have to come down on paper. Mm -hmm. We have to put them there so they're there for posterity. Right, even if that paper, quote unquote, is a canvas and it's a painting. Exactly. Well, now if there are some young people, and we do have hopefully young people watching this show, it goes worldwide. We guesstimate we're hitting over 65 million people, viewers a week worldwide. Fantastic. But of that group, say there's some youth who would be interested in this, can they go to globalscribes.org to get more information on it? Uh, how could they petition their school or their local club or whatever it might be to contact you to participate? Yes, so actually they can do all of those things. Um, one of the things I think that's very different about what we do is that we invite every NGO any kind of organization to actually use our platform to participate. It is for youth by youth, it is youth only. I am the chief cheerleader. Yes, we monitor, but really it is for youth. We're empowering our youth. Um, schools, organizations, they can contact us directly, but if we don't know them, they do have to have a video conference call, <clears throat> as I said. But I think they, what happens, and they really have, they take ownership and this is what's really exciting, because not only are they doing writing, but in step two, they're then bringing what they wrote alive mm -hmm. with a selfie video, either <laughs> acting it out or reading or storytelling. <laughs> if they wrote lyrics in step one, they can do their music. Um, they can do a, an animation or video, but they have mm -hmm. to do a cameo appearance and say hello and who mm -hmm. they are, and there's a reason for that. This is quite a learning experience, <laughs> no doubt about it, it certainly is. So often we see there are certain groups, and I know you want to be all inclusive, but uh, we see that in certain activities, some people are excluded. Uh, people sometimes with developmental disabilities, uh, the deaf, various people like that, who are not able to participate for whatever reason, sometimes discrimination, unfortunately, but for other reasons. Do you try to bring all of these folks together? Anybody that has an interest, you want them to be involved? All youth, for youth, 
by youth, all youth. So we had our first, uh, we have our first uh, school for the deaf that is joining us. And obviously the communication is gonna change a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we are going to, this is a, a, this is a, a pilot, um, but the goal is, is that they will have buddies that are already scribers and hopefully we can communicate through the written word when they're deaf. Mm -hmm. We hope to include blind youth. We hope to have hospitals that have um, youth who are there, short-term, long-term, even terminal, everyone needs a friend. The goal of Global Scribes is global connections, global friendships, cultural understanding, because we also believe that through this program, we are stemming the tide of social isolation, as well as mm -hmm. a platform for decreasing the vulnerabilities for uh, extremists to reach into our vulnerable youth and um, uh, extricate them and use them for various and sundry um, extremist values. And those are contrary to what we think um, mm -hmm. the world can be through this program. So it is all youth. It doesn't matter if they're rich or poor, they're male, female, haven't decided yet, they're pink, purple, polka dotted, <laughs> it doesn't yes. matter. Makes no difference. Everybody Every, is welcome. Everyone's right. welcome. Everyone needs to be recognized. And it's a huge problem with our youth today. They do not feel recognized. Mm -hmm. And we know that suicides are up and bullying is up and drug use is up and all these things are up. And a lot of it is because youth are not receiving individual attention. Mm -hmm. So they give one another uh, attention mm -hmm. and empower one another. Mm -hmm. It's really a support system to a large degree. Absolutely. It certainly is. Now, as I understand, you're only, you've only been operating for about four years, so it, it wouldn't have a, a long track record, but it's hard to keep up with youth <laughs> in any situation. But will you have some type of longitudinal outreach as young people come into the program, maybe go out of the program, graduate, or however you want to say it, and move on with their life? But will you stay in touch with them to see what type of development they have gotten out of this program and what they're doing with that in the future and what are they doing to help create a better world? So, uh, yeah, interesting. And as you know, um, most teenagers, and, and that is the bulk of our uh, uh, clients as a constituency, um, are have the attention span today of Nats. <laughs> and so it's it's really interesting. We have had, and we're through proof of concept going to scale, and uh, we've had youth that drop out and ask if they can please come back in. We've also had youth that were with us through high school and took us on to university. And as they become, we're now just starting with the new segment of the 22 to 25 year olds so that they can actually mentor each other through transition periods, <coughs> junior high to high school, elementary to high school, um, then on to university and then into the workforce. And of course, we absolutely want our alumni mentorship. Our goal is all youth. Our goal is to have youth from every country in the world. And so the more that they can work to help us move that forward, that agenda, um, that would be amazing. That's what you want to do. Absolutely. We, not me. We, not me. <laughs> well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guests. We'd invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you're involved with any type of PBS or community access television station, or perhaps an educational institution that has an intra campus television hookup, or you have a website, you like our shows and you'd like to share them, please feel free to do so. Global Connections Television is provided as a public service at no cost to help people better understand international issues and how they impact us not only internationally, but also locally. Today we're talking about how we can bring together youth from all corners of the world, all the way around the world, to focus on many of the problems. And my guest is an expert on this particular organization. My guest is Cynthia English, and Cynthia English is the CEO and founder of Global Scribes Youth Uniting Nations. Cynthia, we're talking about bringing these youth together, and there's, there's been a mobilization, and one major mobilization just recently, well, it really started about 18 years ago with the UN Millennium Development Goals, but the Sustainable Development Goals, or the, the 2030 Agenda for Development, and these were adopted in 2015, I guess, in September 2015 by all of the countries, 193 nations at the UN. And they're looking, there are 17 of these goals 
to eliminate poverty, to eliminate hunger, to preserve the planet, that climate change. Very laudable goals. There are literally tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of organizations, church groups, a variety of folks around the world working on these businesses. A lot of the private sector folks are involved in it. Do you bring these 17 sustainable development goals into your discussions? And if you do, do you prioritize them? Or some, a li- they're all important, but are some a little more important and more applicable to what you're doing? So to um, number one, absolutely. Um, we, uh, in step four, the youth are asked to choose teams. So we're helping them find their passions and talents at a young age so that they can be more successful as they grow older. So we hit probably on most of the 17 SDGs. Um, However, it is SDG 3, 4, 5, and even 16 that we are most centered around. One is well-being. So of course, our goal is that happy children, happy people are more successful um, people just in life, period. Um, And this this mental well-being, which goes back into (coughs) social isolation, is um, by keeping them engaged. So step one, step two, step three, step four that we have, and anyone can just hit on to our site and and they'll see a little pop-up window, engage with us. We're happy to tell them more detail about that. But they're all engaged in the different, for instance, our science team and and tech team, they're coming up with a drone to pick up litter. You know, how do you design a drone drone that can pick up litter around the world? How can you um, do a world, uh, the tech team is also working on an app for the World Culture Quiz app. So this, um, uh, really, they're pulling together and working daily or working whenever they can because Global Scribes is 24-7. We are virtual, so it's whenever the kids have time. They know family first, school (coughs) second, third, um, Scribes. But they feel empowered. That is mental well-being, so that is one of the SDGs. The other is quality education. We are not, nor do we uh, represent ourselves as being an educational institution. (coughs) However, we are augmenting (coughs) Um, education with leadership and management skills, critical thinking skills, life skills that a lot of the schools do not have time to actually engage the kids in. Gender equality, we accept all youth. It doesn't matter. Everyone is a human being, everyone has ideas, is creative in some way, format, shape, form, and they can help one another. They empower one another through these discussions. And then peace. And it really, this is that long-term goal. If we can remove ourselves from this you know, trajectory of global chaos, then perhaps they can take us to a different world. I say that we're piggybacking off the gaming industry, and why do we say that? And <laughs> are we talking about the gaming industry, the, the betting, <laughs> that type of thing, or a different gaming industry? The are casinos? we talking about video games, or <laughs> which yes. one? You know, and it's it's these youth again, right, that are not the casinos, they're not, not the casinos. gambling, okay. no, no, okay. no. <laughs> but they are gamers, and this technology that they have in their hand it's not gonna go away. But it has done a really interesting thing. They don't see borders the way our generations saw borders. And because their teams are oftentimes made up of people from all over the world. And they just, even Facebook, I mean, it is any of these social uh, types of um, social media, types of interactive um, formats, platforms, they have, erase this thinking from most youth's thinking. They just don't see that. What they start to pick up is then the things that go on that are sort of negative. And so if we can break that early on by piggybacking off the gaming industry and what they really, is a, it's an incredibly positive outsource of this, then I think um, we're doing something really great for our world to make it a better place for the future as well as now. And we all certainly need to do that. We need to work together in unison because there are a lot of global slash local problems that we can work on together. This program over the years, the last 13 years, has focused on a myriad of topics, uh, social development, international trade, economic development, uh, transportation, peace and security, whatever. But we always try to bring two issues in and most of the discussions with most of the guests. One dealing with climate change, which in my opinion is the number one problem affecting the world. And the second deals with gender equality or inequality in most care, in some cases for women and girls. And what are some of the hands-on uh, activities you have to help raise the awareness of the students who are involved with you on say climate change and then on uh, gender equality? 
So I think this also, I mean, just going back a second to talking about piggybacking off the the, uh, the gaming industry, mm -hmm. I, I think that um, one of the really, again, incredible uh, outcomes of that is this awareness of the globe around us. I mean, school does not teach it the way that we were teaching. Their formats have changed. But the kids are aware, and they are aware of like these huge gyro formations and that are out in the seas. I think they're also aware of all the illness that's going on. And so if we are through just all these masses of litter and plastics and et cetera, et cetera, everywhere, making ourselves sick and in turn hurting the planet, then they're aware and they also are aware of the fact that their youth they truly believe they can change the direction of the world on many different levels. And this is something that in a couple of the different teams, climate change and all the other things that we're doing to damage the world, uh, this earth that we live on, mm -hmm. are, are doing. And the part of glo uh, being a virtual company is that they are virtual. I mean, they have these discur discussions virtually. But it's really about getting them to go out and do it. I mean, we're not about rhetoric. Global Scribe says go out there and do it. There is no failure. There is no failure in life except not trying. And this is where they start to feel more and more empowered. Mm -hmm. Well, it's certainly commendable that you're doing a hands-on type of operation virtually to get them involved and to raise their awareness to make them realize or help them realize many of the problems that are out there and how they can have an active voice and help make a difference in this world. What, what do you see over the horizon? What would you like to do with this group next, or with some other group perhaps next, to focus on some of these problems? Do you have another stage? It seems like when we're involved in organizations or entities, we want to bump up to the next level or to the next level, but what is your next level? So, um, you know, going off the, the second question, which was gender equality, mm -hmm. really quickly, oh, a yes. lot of our team sure. ladder leaders are women. Uh, they, they, uh, we have a young woman, she's 17, she is the leader of our tech team. Um, she's also the leader of the Bon Appetit team, which, uh, whatever, we also have boys and, you know, I mean, they're all together and it isn't even about gender. It's about what is your interest and how uh, committed are you in making their project, whatever that is, moving forward. My goal for a lot of these youth is, I mean, as a virtual company, we never will need the number of employees that a lot of companies need. Um, we uh, project probably 25 to 30, even at our, our biggest, uh, our goals of 5 million, 10 million youth. But we do need um, uh, the dynamic energy of all these people. And we do need, obviously, the funding to be able for the tech and everything else and, and the cybersecurity. Um, but how cool if we could actually be able to hire some of these youth who are with us today. And they're the ones who are actually helping us grow organically. We have not done any formal marketing. It has all been through our own youth. And, but how cool if they can take ownership and actually drive it to the next levels and the next levels. That is my goal. That's your goal. It Very is. Good. Yes. How do we make the world a better place? How do we make the world a more peaceful place? How do we get these shared, shared um, resources that they're going to need to survive? Mm -hmm and have jobs, et cetera. Ex exactly, very true. Well, in the last 20 seconds we have, do you have a message for the youth who are watching this program? <gasps> that, that last statement was a very good message, but would you care to say how they can get involved? Yes, oh my gosh, you know, I can only, I wish we had a scriber here. Actually, we were on our way to Boston. I was uh, invited to be a TEDx speaker, and uh, instead I thought, no, it's better if one of our youth are there. But we have two of our youth are coming into Boston to be on TEDx. The, we're opening the door of possibility for all youth. If you're interested, if you'd like to have friends everywhere, if you're exciting, please contact us. Um, gs at globalscribes.org. You can contact me, Cynthia, at globalscribes.org, or even uh, our associate director, Stina, in Amsterdam at globalscribes.org. Mm -hmm. Well, it's certainly a very interesting organization, and Thank it you. looks like it could be a prototype for other groups to be involved and, and possibly do, look at what you're doing, say, oh, this is very successful. Let's see if we can do something similar to this or whatever. But it, it's uh, tremendous to bring the youth of the world together as best we can because we have to deal with these problems today because they're not going to resolve themselves and by tomorrow it may be too late to do it and it's very very commendable that you're moving in this direction but thank Cynthia English I want to thank you thank so you. very much for thank a very you. interesting and a very informative program thank you so much my pleasure thank you I'm Bill Miller thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television